Hello, guys. Nice to see you. After weekend, how are you doing? Mm, good. You? Yeah, I'm also doing fine. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi. Okay, so uh, today we start a new topic, which is capacitance and capacitors. Um, so we will give definition of capacitance. Um, we'll derive capacitance for uh, an isolated conductor and also for um, capacitors, which are like a system of two conductors. They can be of different like arbitrary shape. Uh, so we will uh, consider some uh, specific shapes of our interest and derive equations for these uh, capacitors. Uh, so that will be the main topic of our discussion for today. And uh, let me switch. Oops. Switch to our slides. So we know that if we have a conductor, some arbitrary shape conductor, uh, and we charge it with some electric charge, let's say it's positive charge Q, then uh, what will happen with its surface? Which feature it will gain? Any suggestions? Flux. Uh, what this flux? Uh, so if we provide some electric charge to a conductor, which stays under uh, electrostatic equilibrium condition, then this charge will be residing on the surface of the conductor, and uh, also there will be some. Uh, potential uh, of this uh, surface. <clears throat> so if, for instance, we have another arbitrary conductor, arbitrary shape conductor placed next to the first one and charged negatively, then there will be some electric field lines between them originating on positively charged conductor and terminating on the uh, negatively charged. Uh, and uh, obviously, there will be some potential difference delta V between these two conductors. So <clears throat> capacitance, uh, by definition, is a our ability of uh, body to accumulate electric charge. And uh, uh, it could be either isolated conductor uh, or could be a system of two conductors, which we call a capacitor. So both uh, isolated conductor and a capacitor possess certain capacitance. So uh, experiments shows that um, the amount of charge which can be, well, which is accumulated in such capacitor uh, is directly proportional to potential difference. So we can write that amount of charge collected is equal to some proportionality coefficient we call it capital C, times delta V 
potential difference between um, two conductors which form capacitor or a potential difference between uh, the surface of a single isolated conductor and some uh, point in the infinitely far from this conductor. So quite simple <clears throat> relationship. And uh, this proportionality uh, coefficient, capital C, uh, is called uh, actually capacitance defined as um, the ratio between like accumulated uh, charge uh, divided by potential difference. The units for capacitance are Coulomb per volt, or there is introduced special unit to uh, quantify capacitance is uh, farad. So farad is quite a large uh, quantity. One farad is very high um, capacitance. So usually uh, we operate with uh, micro farads or nano farads, but depends on, on uh, systems and conditions, but these are the most uh, common uh, units which are um, used in everyday life. So uh, there is some special sign for a capacitor on electrical circuits. Uh, so it's just two parallel lines with uh, connectors, like contacts. And uh, that originates from the fact that a majority of um, capacitors which are used in electronic circuits are parallel plate capacitors. So two uh, metal plates uh, with some uh, gap between them, some insulator between them. So that uh, this sign, which you I'm sure have seen previously uh, before, um, just underlines this uh, very basic structure of parallel plate uh, capacitor. So with defining what is capacitance and uh, uh, capacitance of um, isolated conductor or a system of two conductors, which are charged uh, with opposite signs um, and called capacitor. Uh, so we uh, can proceed further and uh, uh, calculate what will be capacitance of different systems. So for the first example, let us consider just a, an isolated um, conductor with, let me clean maybe here, uh, some isolated conductor in the form of a sphere. with radius A. Let assume that we provide some positive charge U to this sphere, and its surface will possess some uh, potential V1. Then let us pick up some sphere with the radius capital R, which approaches infinity. So it's very huge sphere, which is centered around our uh, conductor sphere with um, radius A. <clears throat> so now uh, let us recall how we define surface potential of a uh, sphere. We did some calculations previously. 
in order to derive this equation. So V1, like surface potential of this uh, sphere, metal sphere, isolated conductor, will be equal to Ke, electric constant, times Q, divided by radius of this sphere, A. Now we want to uh, find potential difference between the surface of this uh, metal sphere and a point which is located on this imaginary sphere, infinitely large one. Uh, if we apply the same equation, let's say here we have some potential V2. V2 uh, is equal to Ke times Q divided by R. So if R approaches infinity, then this guy approaches zero. Means that the difference, potential difference is equal to V1. And that is equal to Ke Q divided by A, because we need to subtract just zero. So we remember this equation, which gives us the definition of capacitance. So now we just need to substitute here um, the values of each term, U and delta V. So capacitance of such isolated spherical conductor will be given as U divided by delta V and delta V is this. AE, U divided by A. So we end up with A divided by KE. And we remember that AE is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught. In this case, eventually we get four pi epsilon naught times A. So this simple equation gives us the capacitance of an isolated um, sphere. Uh, what is really important to highlight here in this equation that capacitance as a feature of this body to accumulate um, electric charge depends exclusively only on one factor, uh, and that is the radius of the sphere. So it does not depend on the surface potential, doesn't depend on the amount of charge it already collected. So it means that uh, capacitance will not change if you have neutral sphere and just add some amount of charge, or you already have some charge residing on the surface of the sphere and uh, its ability to accumulate more charge when you will charge it further uh, will not change because in this final equation, we have um, permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, which is constant, and only one uh, parameter which describes the system, and that is the radius of the sphere. So um, capacitance tends to be um, parameter which um, is defined exclusively by geometrical feature of conductors. So in order to support this uh, initial conclusion, let us proceed further and look at other systems. In this case, we already will uh, deal with capacitors, with, with a system of two uh, conductors. So we will start with the most trivial system, which is parallel plate capacitor. So 
if we have two metal plates located close to each other, we can charge one with positive charge Q, another with negative charge Q. Then, assuming that the distance between the plates D is uh, much smaller than the linear size of these plates, let's say uh, here we can have L, like linear size, so D should be much less than L. In that case, we have uniform and parallel electric field in the space between these two parallel plates. So here is electric field vector. Uh, we remember that uh, electric field next to an infinitely large uh, plate, charge plate, uh, we derive this uh, equation applying Gauss law, if you remember. I hope you do. We got sigma divided by two epsilon naught. Uh, so that is for electric field magnitude um, next to uh, a single uh, charged flat surface. Since we have two plates here, both of them make contribution to this internal electric field between in the space between plates. That's why electric, the like magnitude of electric field inside of uh, such parallel plate capacitor will be given as E equals to sigma, which stands for the surface density of electric charge uh, accumulated on the surface of these plates divided by epsilon naught. So it means twice larger because we get contributions from <clears throat> uh, uh, two plates. So we know now the magnitude of electric field in uh, space between these conductors. Uh, we know that this is uniform electric field, so it doesn't change as we move from one plate to another. Um, also, we can write it a little bit in a different form. It can be written as Q, total charge, which is accumulated on um, the plate, divided by epsilon naught a. So Q divided by a, that actually gives us sigma, assuming that sigma also does not depend on the uh, position of the, uh, on the plate. So it's uh, uniformly distributed. So uh, we can represent electric field inside parallel plate capacitor with this um, equation Q divided by epsilon A times uh, epsilon naught times A. And A is area of the plate. <clears throat> So now the question is, can someone tell me what will be the potential difference between uh, these two plates? E multiply by D. Can you say louder, please? E multiplied by D. Exactly, you're correct. That's right statement. E times D. So this is possible only because electric field is uniform along all distance between these two plates. 
if it's uniform, then nothing else uh, we need. We just need to know uniform electric field. And um, since electric field vector is uh, aligned uh, perpendicular to the plates, surface of the plates um, means along this uh, displacement, when you move from one uh, plate to another by the shortest uh, way, um, then we just multiply elect uniform electric field uh, by um, distance between plates, and that gives us the um, potential difference between plates. So now we can write that it will be equal Q divided by epsilon naught A, that stands for E, times D. <clears throat> so that is potential difference. Now, if we know charge, which is accumulated, and potential difference, according to the definition of capacitance, C is equal to Q divided by delta V, we can calculate the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. That will be Q divided by Q epsilon naught A times D. Eventually we get this and this we cancel out and that will be uh, maybe like this. Uh, that will be epsilon naught times A divided by D. So that's very known equation for parallel plate capacitance, parallel plate capacitor, um, when we need to determine its capacity. So what do we see here? That again, we have permittivity of free space, assuming that we have just nothing between these uh, plates, we have some vacuum. Then capacitance is proportional to the uh, area, it increases for larger area and reversely proportional to the uh, distance between plates. Uh, the, any suggestions? Why did we get such result uh, in terms of? Uh, wouldn't it make sense that if we have larger distance between plates and larger area, both larger, that we would have larger capacity? So why, if we reduce actually the space uh, between parallel plate capacitors, which means we reduce the volume where electric field can be can exist uh, inside this system. We increase capacitance. We assume that if we have a larger volume means larger at fixed A, larger distance between plates, then we have larger volume to uh, uh, form electric field, and that could maybe cause larger ability for such a capacitor to accumulate electric charge. However, it's not true, actually, uh, reversally proportional to the distance between plates. So that comes from the fact that we have uniform uh, electric field, which does not depend on the distance between plates. Here you see it's given only by the 
surface density of electric charge means that electric field magnitude will be the same no matter if we have uh, one millimeter or five millimeters between these plates. And at the same time, according to the definition of capacitors, potential difference delta V is in the denominator. So means that if we have constant electric field magnitude, regardless of distance between plates, the larger distance, the larger will be this delta V. And that is in the denominator, means larger distance causes uh, smaller capacitance. So that is the uh, relationship between capacitance and distance between the plates of the capacitor, which would be good to um, uh, think about and realize. <clears throat> So what is the true reason uh, behind having this uh, distance between plates in the denominator, not in numerator? Mm -hmm. Besides, of course, mathematical derivation of this equation. So now we can proceed further and deal with more interesting case. Uh, which is probably not such uh, fundamental uh, as uh, power plate capacitance uh, equation, but quite interesting in uh, terms of derivation and um, also because it has some uh, special shape of a capacitor. So uh, we will deal now with cylindric capacitor. Oh, yeah, we have a question. You're welcome. Oh, excuse me, I'll ask, uh, can you show previous uh, paper? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I just want to ask about uh, why, for example, the first time we write sigma divide two epsilon zero, and then zero is only one epsilon zero. Oh, yeah, so uh, that is because uh, Sigma divided by two epsilon zero, that stands for just a single uh, charge plate. Oh. Uh, if we have two plates, means uh, as we have in this uh, capacitor, then electric field is kind of enhanced by both of them because we oh. have solution from positively charged and negatively charged. To be more um, represent, to, to be more like graphically uh, clear, we can do something like this. Uh, no, let us do one second. Let us do in different colors, maybe. So let's assume this is our positively charged plate plus U. Here will be our negatively charged plate, U minus. Then we will have electric field vector originated from positively charged plate, and that will be directed from the left to the right. However, at the same time, electric field vector created by the negatively charged plate will be also directed in the same, like pointed in the same direct, direction. And that means that we kind of uh, sum up two electric fields created by each of these uh, plates, and eventually we get twice larger electric field in the space between um, these two, uh, two, two plates. So that's why we, uh, instead of writing uh, two in denominator, we just get rid of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question. Now, let us 
consider so-called cylindrical capacitor. Ah, uh, let me try to show it. So we have external conductor. Then we have some internal conductor. The radius of this internal conductor we will consider as A and radius of the external one will be B. So now let us assume that we charge positively internal conductor and negatively external conductor. So we assume that the lens oops, I changed the lens of this system L will be much larger than both radiuses A and B. Uh, so in that case, if we uh, consider um, our system like with a view, like cross section from view from top, electric field vector will radially go in all directions perpendicular to the surface of both conductors uh, originating from this common center point. So now let us consider some imaginary surface in between these two conductors with some radius R, uh, also centered about this uh, common center, the like common axis of all these uh, conductors. We know from general definition that um, the uh, difference, potential difference between surface of the first conductor, which is at distance A from the center, and on the second conductor, which is at distance B from the center, will be given as uh, with the following equation. VB minus VA, that is equal to integral from A, B, E times D, S. So this is general case. We have integral from A to B, um, assuming the product of uh, electric field vector and displacement vector. Uh, Taking into account the symmetry of this case, when electric field is aligned radially from uh, the center of the system, um, and that will be always parallel to the uh, normals, uh, normal vectors to the uh, surfaces, uh, <clears throat> then potential uh, difference will be Vb minus Va is equal to minus integral from A to B. Uh, Er, like in this radial direction electric field, uh, times dr. Uh, so we did this like uh, previously. So now let us try to um, determine the uh, 
electric fuel first, because we need to know this electric field uh, between two conductors with radius A and radius B um, inside this capacitor. And then once we determine this electric field, we can calculate potential difference. And that's what we need to do in order to uh, finally calculate capacitance of such uh, 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 cylindrical, cylindrical capacity. So uh, in order to um, determine electric field, we apply uh, Gauss law. So we can say that electric field flux through this imaginary surface in between two conductors with the radius R will be equal to electric field uh, magnitude times two pi times R times L. So we have uh, actually side uh, surface area of this imaginary surface, which we have cross section on this image. Uh, so area multiply electric field at this point as a distance from the center R will um, give us electric field flux. So from other point of view, electric field flux, according to uh, Gauss law, is equal to uh, total electric charge enclosed by this imaginary surface divided by epsilon naught. So now we can uh, equate these parts from left and right, two pi r l uh, is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. And uh, assuming that total electric charge um, is equal to lambda times L, uh, that is linear density of electric charge accumulated along the uh, first uh, conductor, along the length of the uh, first conductor per unit, uh, uh, charge per unit length, this lambda. So if we multiply it by L, we get the total charge. And denominator here, we have epsilon naught. So taking this into account, we can write the expression for the electric field inside such uh, quaxel uh, system. Electric field magnitude will be uh, lambda divided by two pi epsilon naught times R. Uh, or in other terms, it will be two times Ke constant, electric constant times lambda divided by R. So we see that um, electric field uh, magnitude uh, reduces uh, with the increase of distance from the center, uh, or in other words, it is reversally proportional to the distance uh, from the center and is defined by uh, linear density of um, electric charge lambda. So once we have expression for the electric field magnitude um, as a function of distance uh, from the center, uh, from the axis of this uh, cylindrical capacitor, uh, then we can proceed further with the calculation of um, its capacitance. Let us go to another slide. And uh, we can write that potential difference between uh, two conductors central and external, will be given as minus integral 
from A to B, from radius of the central to radius of the external conductor, um, E, R, D, R. And when we substitute expression for this electric field magnitude as a function of R, of distance from the distance from the center, then we get minus 2ke times integral from a to b dr over r. That is equal to minus 2ke um, I guess I forgot. Uh, yeah, I forgot this lambda. It should be 2ke lambda. So it should be one more constant here. Should be lambda. And here should be lambda. Uh, natural logarithm of r. So that's our integral uh, from a to b. And that is equal to minus 2ke lambda, natural logarithm of b minus natural logarithm of a. Uh, or if we take into account properties of uh, logarithms, uh, the difference between logarithms gives us the logarithm of the ratio. So we can uh, write that it is equal to minus 2ke lambda natural logarithm of b divided by a. So that is the um, equation for the potential difference. Uh, and uh, um, now we can calculate capacitance. Keep in mind that uh, we, for calculating capacitance, we don't care about the actual sign of the potential difference. We care only about the absolute value. So we do not um, deal with this minus here. Uh, we just substitute absolute value of this potential difference between surface um, um, of the first and second conductors, like central and external conductors. So that will be Q, total charge accumulated by such capacitor, divided by delta V. You can highlight here that it's absolute value. And um, then instead of Q, we can put lambda times L. And here we divide it by 2K lambda, uh, natural logarithm of B divided by A. Uh, eventually we get this cancel out L divided by 2K uh, E natural logarithm uh, B divided by A. So that is the equation for the capacitance of a cylindric capacitor. And uh, uh, what is um, important to underline that in all examples which we considered today, if we come back to uh, even the sphere, just isolated capacitor, capacitor uh, isolated uh, conductor, we have capacitance defined only by radius. Then if we go to uh, parallel plate capacitor, we have capacitance defined by area and distance between plates. And here for cylindric capacitor, we get length of the cylinder and ratio between external and internal radius. Means in all three cases, no matter which uh, geometry we consider, um, we get capacitance as a function of uh, shape and because we get different like functions, uh, but 
um, for different shapes. But uh, capacitance is a feature of shape and size of the isolated conductor or um, uh, capacitor, uh, which consists of two conductors placed close to each other. So all other parameters besides this shape and size uh, do not um, influence on the uh, capability of um, conductor or system of two conductors capacitor to uh, accumulate electric charges. So with this, I would like to finish our discussion and summarize that today we introduced new concept of capacitance, uh, which is the uh, proportionality coefficient, which relates the uh, electric charge accumulated by a conductor or a capacitor and potential difference either of its surface with respect to infinity uh, or um, potential difference between two um, conductors which form the capacitor um, and derive, deriving equations for the capacitance of different systems, we have shown that only shape and um, size of these uh, systems define uh, capability of um, the, like their capabilities of accumulating electric charge. So this is the most important message to take home. And uh, further, we will um, continue with uh, uh, learning more about capacitors, specifically um, focus our attention on um, uh, connecting capacitors in different ways, in series and in parallel, um, how their capacitors will uh, change, like some equivalent capacitor of such a uh, battery of capacitors. And uh, also further, we will deal with uh, energy of electric field accumulated in um, such capacitors. So that will, we will continue already uh, next time on Wednesday. If you have any questions, you're welcome. Yeah, then if everything is clear, then thank you for attention. Hope to see you next time. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, yes? I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a little mistake in long kappa, uh, such as instead of minus one, I write plus one, uh, I can correct this mistake and change grade, or we can do it. No, unfortunately, it's impossible. That is uh, already what is submitted, that is graded. Uh, that is not possible to change in long kappa anymore. Oh, okay, thank you. Goodbye. You're welcome. So please be careful with submitting your answers, like final answer. Hey, guys, take care. Bye.